The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... E.G. Marshall. Some trades, said the philosopher, may be considered unpleasant or even ugly. However, they all may have their moments of pleasure. Now, if I were a grave digger or even a hangman, I know some people I could work for with a great deal of enjoyment. So you see, everything has its bright side, not to mention its reward. What are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. Believe me, I don't. I've come here to kill you. Kill me? What for? For what you did to me. I never did anything to you. Think. I never... Think back. Way back. Go back. A thousand years. mystery drama This Time Around was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Gordon Heath. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and x I'll be back shortly with Act One. His name is Kenneth B. Sturgis and his initials KBS are familiar throughout the country. He's the vice president and chief executive officer of a mammoth conglomerate enterprise, which happens to be, as they say, into everything. It's been just marvelous for Kenneth B. Sturgis. It has made him one of the movers and shakers of our nation. It has paid him an annual salary in six figures, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Underneath are all kinds of bonuses, options, expense accounts. Well, you have the idea. But in one respect, the great KBS is even like you and me. He shows up for work in the morning. Good morning, Miss Magruder. Morning, sir. Your coffee. Thank you. What's on the desk? Nothing important, sir. What do I have to do this morning? Well, the company jet standing by. Why? Well, to take you to Washington. What for? Meeting of the President's Commission on Energy Conservation. I'll skip this one. Yes, sir. I'll save energy by staying home. What else? Oh, the chairman of the board is here. Why isn't he in Bermuda? I don't know, but he would like you to stop in and see him. When? Anytime at your convenience. Stand, Sir Kenneth. Who was that? Uh, Who was what? That's what I just asked you. Stand, Sir Kenneth. There it is again. That voice. What, What voice? Are you telling me you didn't hear a voice just now? No, sir. I didn't. You didn't hear a voice say, Stand, Sir Kenneth. I I didn't hear anything of the sort. Stand, Sir Kenneth. There. Just now. You mean you don't hear that? Sir, I... I... I, I'm sorry. Stand, Sir Kenneth. Who bids me stand? I, Baldwin, envoy of the king. The king? I carry the orders of his majesty. King Stephen can have no envoy because there is no king in England. There is a queen, and her name is Maud. I warn you, Sir Kenneth, of treason. Stephen is the traitor. The daughter of King Henry I is our lawful ruler. By what right, Sir Kenneth? By the right of this sword and every loyal blade in England. Kenneth, Kenneth, for how many years have we bloodied ourselves in this battle... How many good men have died? And for what? For what? The country has been bled white. The people starve. And where will it all end? When traitors like you recognize the lawful Queen Maud. Why not have an agreement? What sort of agreement? An agreement that allows Stephen to rule for the rest of his life. To be succeeded by Maud's son, Henry. You're mad. This is the time for moderation. Moderation. For cooler heads to prevail. For wise men to seek conciliation. You see, they will need scapegoats. For what? For all these foul years of unholy carnage. Reasonable men will ask, 
If we can have peace and agreement now, why could we not have had it then and prevented so much misery? Do you know what the answer will be? Baldwin, you presume... The answer will be that the conflict was instigated and prolonged by ambitious nobles who saw a chance to profit by it. By traitors. But Maud is the rightful ruler of this realm. Rightful, wrongful. After 15 years, does it even matter? Truth and justice always matter. It's not too late. Join me. Become a moderating force. I cannot accept, Stephen. Never. We have nothing further to talk about, Baldwin. The issue can only be resolved by steel. Will you fight? I don't think so. I shall withdraw my troops. Then you are afraid. You know, Kenneth, I can think of nothing more tragic and futile than to be the last man killed in a war that is all over. Baldwin. Baldwin. Mr. Sturgis, I, I don't understand. What are you saying? Are you all right, Miss Magruder? Oh, oh yes, sir. All I asked you was, when does the chairman of the board want to see me? Yes, sir. And I told you, any time at your convenience. Then what's the problem? We, you asked me if I heard a voice. A voice? Yes, sir. A voice that said, stand, Sir Kenneth. I asked you. Oh, yes, sir. And, and you just stood there for, for almost two minutes, just staring. And then and suddenly you shouted, Baldwin, Baldwin. I what? You, you you called out the name Baldwin. Baldwin? Why would I call out the name Baldwin? I'm sure I, I couldn't say. I don't even know anybody by the name of Baldwin. I'll answer that, please. Oh, but it's your private executive line, sir. Oh. Hello? Hi. Well, hello. What are you doing? Shooting. That's good. I should say this little epic we're filming will make your company a billion dollars and me an Academy Award winner. You miss me? Constantly. That isn't true. It isn't. You only miss me when you think about me. And you only think about me when you don't have something more important on your mind. I know my place. Yes. And it's a secure place in the hearts of millions of American red-blooded men. <laughs> How secure is it in yours, strong heart? What did you just call me? You called me Strongheart? Well, sure. Why, Della? Why did you call me Strongheart? Because it's kind of, sort of, I don't know, seems to suit you. Strongheart. Yes, now that I think of it, I like it. Strongheart. Kenneth? Is something wrong? No. Uh, no, uh, I, uh... I may fly out tonight. We'll have dinner. Would you like to? Oh, yes, my lord. Now, why did you say that? Um, i better not say any more. You're having a bad morning. I am not. I'll see you tonight at dinner. If I can make it. Well, darling, if you can't make it, then I won't see you. Goodbye for now, strong heart. Strong heart. Strong heart. I, I beg your pardon, sir... You're saying something to me, but I'm not sure I understand what it means. I wasn't saying anything, Miss Magruder. Well, you were looking right at me, and you were... Uh, look, Mr. Sturgis, I... I believe you, you should see a doctor. You do? You seem to be having some sort of problem. You've been hearing things that no one else has heard. And you've been saying things without being aware of the fact that you've said them. Oh? Well, it seems to me you've just been muttering the word... Strongheart. Oh, that, yes. Uh, Miss uh, Downing just used it on the phone. Oh, uh, talking about Miss Downing, sir, you asked me to monitor the media, as you put it, to see if anything has surfaced. And? Well, the gossip columns in both the Globe and the press link your name and Della Downing. Thank you. Uh, cancel my afternoon. I, I have to fly out to the coast. Yes, sir. Yes? Oh, of course, Madge. I'll tell him. The chairman of the board wants to know if you can pop in there for a minute or two. Strong heart. Strong heart. Sir Kenneth, strong heart. Hear this bill of attainder. Be 
because of your acts of treason against His Majesty King Stephen, because of the high crimes committed against the people of England, your lands and goods and chattels are forfeit to the crown, and you are hereby condemned to death. <laughs> Baldwin, have you seen her? Have you seen Queen Maud? Yes, Kenneth, I have. There is no need then to speak. I, I read the verdict on your face. She wants you to know she tried to save you. Did she? I think she did. A little. And this is to be my reward for faithful service. No, it's the price you pay for guessing wrong. And you, Baldwin... You are now more secure than ever. Not really. I have merely weathered a storm. How strongly you fought against Queen Maud. And now you can accept her son. What did you always call him? This loud-mouthed little Plantagenet upstart. As the next king of England. It's the way of the world, Kenneth. For years we had been enemies. But I respected you because I believed you fought for a principle. Well, there's no help for it, Kenneth. We reach that point where the practicalities of life take over. And there's nothing we can do for our principles. Yes, there is. We can die for them. And that's what you've chosen to do. Yes. I'm sorry for you, Kenneth. And I am sorry for you, Baldwin. I'm sorry for you, Baldwin. Uh, Mr. Sturgis? Uh, who is Baldwin? And why are you sorry for him? What are you talking about, Miss Magruder? Oh, I I'm sorry, sir, but y you keep talking to yourself. You mean I seem to be saying things again? Uh, yes, sir. Let's... Let's just forget about it, shall we? Uh, yes, Mr. Sturgis. The chairman of the board has issued his summons, and uh, I don't want to keep his majesty waiting. Oh, good morning, Ken. Morning, Steve. How's the golf? It's been better. How's the fishing? Oh, it's been worse. How's Carolyn? Oh, she's just great. And Edna? Can't complain. How are the kids? Kids? Janie is engaged and Bobby's entering law school in September. <laughs> My uh, godson is going to be a lawyer. He says he has dreams of the Supreme Court. Well, when the time comes, we could uh, pull a string or two for him. I thought you were on vacation. I am. And what are you doing here? I came back because I have something to say to you. You could have said it on the phone. It wouldn't sound good on the phone. What wouldn't sound good on the phone? You're fired. Those two words don't sound good wherever, whenever, or however they're said. You're fired. Now, isn't there some sort of parallelism running through the story... Here we have a modern captain of industry who seems to have some intimations of a past life as a nobleman during the Middle Ages. And he got fired there, in a way, also. Well, that's enough for the first act. We'll go forward and also backward when I return with Act Two. are the saddest words of tongue or pen. I'm sure you're fired would certainly rank high on everybody's list. Yes, here we have a Mr. Kenneth B. Sturgis, one of the highest and mightiest. His daily decisions could affect the lives of millions of people. And yet, like any one of those millions, he too can arrive at a day when someone higher up can say to him, you're fired. Do you mean I'm out? Just cool down a minute. You just told me I'm fired and you want me to be cool. Well, you're not quite fired. Let's say you're as good as fired. What are you trying to do to the English language, Steve? I'm either in or I'm out. Well, right now, you're in the doorway. What's going on here? And you can move in either direction. Get to the point. We showed a profit for every single one of the five years I've been chief operating officer. The board of directors is frankly worried. About what? If you'd spend a little more time in understanding the attitudes on the board... But I don't have it to spare. I spend all my time making money for this company. Uh, not all your time, Ken. 
You spend quite a bit of it in Hollywood with Miss Della Downing. Now, there are people in this country who find that sort of thing distasteful and immoral. Uh, Ken, you're not playing according to the rule. Come on, Steve. Just because I'm having a, uh, an affair with a movie actress. Oh, she's not just a movie actress, Ken. She's probably the most famous star of them all right now. And for this reason, the board intends to fire me? It's a uh, part of a bill of particulars. You mean a bill of attainder? A what? A bill of attainder. <laughs> What's that? You're a lawyer. You know perfectly well what... Oh, yes, well, uh, but it's a, it's a medieval kind of... What does this have to do with anything? It was a way you could strip a man down and chop off his head. Well, now, nobody wants to chop off your head, Kenny. They don't? No. Actually, I'm trying to suggest a way you can keep it. I don't even know if I want to hear it. For over 15 years, I've gone all out for this company. No one denies that. I pushed our volume up into the top ten. Yes, Kenneth, but... But nothing. I quit. Oh, You quit to do what? I can get a better job than this tomorrow morning. There is no better job than this, and nobody would hire you anyhow. What is it you want? I'll tell you what the board wants. Reassurance. Give it to them at the next meeting, and it's not too late. What kind of reassurance? The board feels that we're expanding too far, too fast. This is a time to consolidate. Oh, no. This is a time when the weak sisters are being pushed out. There'll never be an opportunity like this again. The board feels an obligation to protect the stockholders. I can only operate in one way, my way. Then you're going to be out. What you're telling me to do is to go to the board with my hat in my hand and fall on my knees and promise to be their faithful little lackey. What I'm telling you to do is give the board the assurance that you can be the proper operating officer for the very difficult economic, political, and social problems that lie ahead of us. If I do go to the board, it'll be to tell them to go soak their heads. Do that. And they'll promptly take yours off. I'll go directly to the stockholders. You can't win that kind of battle. You know it. We'll see if I can or not. If the board wants war, I'll... Oh, war. Poor Kenneth. I can think of nothing more futile or tragic than to be the only man killed in a war that never got off the ground. I received your message, Kenneth. Thank you for coming, Sir Baldwin. It was a request from one night to another. I could not refuse. I am told the hour for... The execution has been set. Yes. Tomorrow morning, at first light, I have one hope. I'm afraid there's no hope. The queen. Queen Maud herself. Well, surely you know she agreed to your death. But if I could see her, just for a moment... It would do no good. Baldwin, do me this service. Ask her. Just ask her. But I... Do me this service, Baldwin. This one thing for me. Do this thing for me. This one thing for me. Kenneth? Kenneth! What are you saying? What do you want me to do for you? What? Well, you just said, do this for me. Now, what do you want me to do for you? What? What are you talking about? Hello, darling. Kenneth. Hey, you seem surprised to see me. Well, I am, in a way. Why? I said I'd fly out for dinner, didn't I? Yes, but... Uh... Yes, but what? Uh, uh, nothing. Well, where shall we go to dinner? How about Luzetto's? Oh, why not spend a quiet evening at home and I'll prepare dinner. You know how to cook? Of course I do. Let's just have a quiet evening. Besides, in view of the situation, it might be wiser. If... What situation? You... Your situation. Your upcoming problem with the board. What do you know about it? A great many people know about it. Yes, but how do you know about it? Darling, I'm a very large shareholder. After all, you invested my money wisely for me. Who spoke to you? Ken, the word is out. If you fight the board, you're done for. And everybody knows you've chosen to fight. I can fight and win. I can go to the stockholders. You're a stockholder. I made you rich. Darling, let us not rewrite history. I was rich before I met you. I've tripled your net worth. You can't deny it. 
I admit it. You owe it to my way of doing business. I do, but it's quite possible that now your way... Yes? Oh, darling. You've heard it said that generals lose wars today by using the winning tactics of yesterday. Flexibility, darling. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Uh, well, we don't have to talk about that now, do we? No, I plan to be home all evening. Yes, Tommy. Goodbye, dear. That Tommy always tries to impress me with the fact that he's working for me day and night, calls me at home at all hours. Did he call you to make sure you'd stay home tonight? Now, why would he do that? Maybe you all decided it might be best to go easy on this romance with Kenneth B. Sturgis. It might be wise to start phasing it out of the media and the mind of the public. What are you saying? You don't know? Let me explain. There's something adventurous, romantic, when your lover is one of the top men in Wall Street and Washington. Successful and powerful people are always forgiven their little peccadilloes. But there's something disreputable and sordid when the man in the case has lost out, is on the way down. Kenneth. Who is no longer a wheeler and dealer, a mover and shaker. That thought never entered my mind. Maybe it didn't enter of its own accord, but it was very deftly put there by people who have a stake in your career. Kenneth, I... I don't blame them. They're doing their jobs, protecting their investment. I still love you. What is the word still doing in there? Kenneth, please don't turn this into an inquisition. I won't. I also think I'd better be getting back early. You're going to fight it out. It's the only way I know how to operate. Will I see you again? That depends. On what? On whether I win or lose. Oh, Kenneth. Why can't we just be two people in love? Because we're not just two people. You love me because I'm rich and powerful and important. That isn't... See, you were about to tell a lie, but you're too honest. And I love you because you're beautiful, desirable, glamorous, and every man envies me. The moment either of us loses those special qualities... I... I'd better be starting back. Goodbye, Strongheart. Why do you call me that? I don't know. Ken, why do you look like that? So, so serious, as if your mind is a million miles or a thousand years away from here. Why? Strongheart. I was called that name once. But when? Where? Hello, Carolyn. Ken, I thought you were in California. No, I, uh, I have some important things to do here at home. Oh, and besides, she threw you out. No, I walked out on her. Huh. Was the handwriting on the wall? Carolyn, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Can you fit me into your schedule? You have a right to talk that way, but it would be counterproductive. Do you want a divorce? No. I've been thinking, Carolyn. We haven't had much of a life together these past 15 years. <laughs> I agree. The reason is we haven't made any real life together, have we? No, we haven't. And so I want to tell you what I would like. Kenneth. Who is that? Sir Kenneth. Do you hear him? Do I hear who? Sir Kenneth. Him. Her Majesty, Queen Maud. Please rise, Sir Kenneth. Your Majesty, you've come. Yes. I have come to see a good and loyal knight. Have you come to save me? Your Majesty, I am pleading for mercy. Please, Sir Kenneth. For more than mercy, for justice. The judges have spoken. But they are your judges. It was the way you would have it, Sir Kenneth. No. It was the way your father would have it. King Henry 
son of William the Conqueror himself, at the great close of his life as he lay dying, clasped my right hand in both of his. Swear to me, noble Kenneth, that my only living child, my Maud, shall be queen of this land that my father has wrested from the Saxons. Swear to me that your sword will always uphold her right. Swear. And I took an oath. I know. To defend your right to the throne. And you have. But Stephen is king. My son will succeed him. And so my right to the throne is secure. And my head is to be forfeit. That is the price. Sir Kenneth, you were willing to give your life for that right. To defend it, not to buy it. I'm sorry. Truly sorry. Your Majesty, I don't ask this for myself. You cannot trust Stephen. I don't ask this for myself. Not for myself. What don't you ask for yourself, Kenneth? I... I guess I'm under a kind of strain lately. I shouldn't wonder. I see things. I hear things. What sort of things? Voices. Images. I can't figure them out. It, it's as if I'm actually living somewhere else and involved in something else. Oh. Should you see a doctor? I, I want to ask you something. Yes? I want to change my entire way of living, my philosophy of life. You do? I would want us to to start all over again. To work at our marriage the, the way other people do. Do you know what I mean? Yes. What's your answer? It's the most serious and important question a man can ask his wife. Do you want to salvage our marriage? Yet it seems that just a few moments ago, in a dream, or in another incarnation, or in another world, he asked the most serious question a man could ask his queen. Will you save my life? And he was turned down there. Shall we balance the equation here? Wait for Act Three. One time around, all you get. It doesn't seem right somehow. After all, time. Time stretches on and on, out into infinity. And life is so short. Over before it's even fairly begun, for so many of us. Well, maybe we do keep going. Maybe we do keep coming back. Maybe we keep doing the same things over and over again. From now till eternity. You want us to begin all over again? Yes, Carol. And make our marriage happy and and fulfilling? Yes, I want that. (laughs) It's remarkable. I've changed. Have you, Kenneth? Yes, I'm not driven to, to... I know what this word must sound like, but it expresses the truth. I'm not driven to conquer. Not anymore. What are you being driven to do? Nothing. I have more money than I could ever spend. I've worked very hard. And now, why not relax? Why not? You haven't answered my question. I know. I'm overwhelmed by it. Overwhelmed? Yes. By the arrogance of it. Arrogance? Here I express the absolute humility of... Your idea of humility. Well, it isn't your fault. It's how you're made. How can you say I'm being arrogant when I'm on... When you're what? Don't you realize what you're saying to me? My dear, for almost 20 years, we have had what amounted to a marriage of convenience for me. We shared a home, but we didn't really live together. Well, not very much. I needed you for social and political purposes. Carolyn. And now I want a change. I want this marriage to be meaningful. It suits my needs for us to have a serious relationship. That, in effect, is what you're telling me. Yes. But why is it arrogant? Because, because it doesn't take into consideration my needs. 
And the fact is, Kenneth, I had to learn to do without you. You won't ever have to do without me again. I know you're angry, and and you have a right to be uh, about those other women. Yes, I do have that right. I'll never forgive you. Do you know why? I had no right to be unfaithful. Oh, I could have overlooked that. It's whom you were unfaithful with. You see, the average betrayed wife can look down at her husband's mistress and say, Oh, whatever does he see in her? Well, that allows her to feel superior, and so she can forgive him. But you, the women you chose were more than I could ever be. Carolyn, I... Every one of them only reminded me that I was a nobody. And so what right did I have to complain? Your first... She's considered the finest woman painter alive today. Your second will soon be elected to the United States Senate. Your third is not just a pretty face on the screen, but an actress of stature who plays Shakespeare and Shaw. We're talking about the past. It's dead. No, no, it's alive. It's very much alive. It's what molds us and makes us... The fact is, I need you now. But the fact is, I don't need you Are you trying to tell me there's someone else? Yes. I see. No, I don't think you do. There's someone else, because there had to be someone else. There wasn't you. And do you know why? Because you didn't need me. I tell you, that was in the past. You didn't need me. You don't need me now. You'll never need me. You'll never need anyone. There are those men who can live only for their own purpose. Kenneth, it'll pass. What will pass? This this moment of panic. You're afraid, aren't you? Yes, you are. For the first time in your life. And you don't know how to handle it. So you've decided to play it Stephen's way and to become a tame lapdog for the board. And you'll even try to become respectable. Oh, Kenneth. How long can those good resolutions of yours last? Only till you see the next spectacular financial opportunity or encounter your next spectacular woman. Yes. Thanks, Carolyn. Well, it has to be a fight to the finish. You were born out of your time. You should have lived in the age of the robber barons. The robber... In those middle ages, when the only limit to your ambition was the strength of your arm. You took what you wanted. Land, women. Well, take over the corporation. Take it away from Stephen. Why not? I took the crown away from Stephen once. What did you say? Hmm? Uh, About a, a crown. Now, don't tell me you're hearing things, too. Miss Magruder? Yes, sir. Have all those letters gone out to the stockholders? Yes, sir. And the proxies are coming back. I'll show Steve and that board where to head in. Uh, Yes, sir. Has Mr. Damien called back? Uh, No, sir. Has anybody called back? No, sir. General Morrison at the Pentagon? No, sir. Are you sure you left your message? Yes, sir. All right. I don't want to be disturbed for a while. What do they say? It's always darkest just before dawn. Hello? Uh, Let me speak with Miss Downing, please. This is Mr. Sturgis. Uh, Kenneth B. Sturgis. In reference to what? Are you new around there? No, I don't want to leave a message. I want you to tell her I'm on the telephone. I understand that she's on the set. Just tell her that I... See here. You just go out there and tell her that I... Hello? Hello? Yeah. Kenneth? Well, Steve? You're licked. You think so? Why did you start this fight? Why did you continue to fight, Sir Kenneth? I had no choice. You had no choice. Wise men always have choices, Sir Kenneth. Your Majesty, listen to me. Kenneth, what are you saying? Your Majesty... Your Majesty, Stephen, the false Stephen, he has a son who will seek the crown. We have signed an agreement. An agreement? Yes. 
And you could have been part of that agreement. But you were instead headstrong and stubborn. In your cause, my queen. My cause has been peace. And the crown for my son. There can be no peace while Stephen is alive. Your majesty, the army will follow me. Let me lead the army. The army will follow you no longer. It's my army. I trained it. I led it for you. The army is tired. They long for peace. To go home. To till the soil. To sow the crops. For 20 years there has not been a harvest in England that has not been drenched with blood. Hear me, madam. No. No. Hear me. It was turbulent men like yourself who have kept Stephen and me apart. Who have prevented us from making this land peaceful and fruitful and happy. You sought to enrich yourselves with your swords. Oh, my lord. You were right, Sir Baldwin. You told me they would have it so. Perhaps you should have listened. I see now. Stephen has truly won. England has won. Sir Kenneth, for the sake of my father, I give you my deepest regard and affection in this hour of your travail. Thank you, madam. We shall meet, I hope, in another world. I shall pray. Goodbye, Sir Kenneth. Do you forgive me? Yes, madam. I forgive you. For your father's sake, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. You forgive me? For what? No, I don't forgive you. What are you talking about? What are you doing here? Uh, Ken, I want us to be friends. Friends? We had a difference of opinion. You lost. Does it have to be the end of the world? Yes, Oh, look, if this were the olden days, I would have cut off your head. In the olden days, you did. Now, what are you talking about? I don't know. I I just don't know. I can appreciate you're under a strain. You think you've won. You and the board have won. But I've got some defense contracts I've been holding in reserve. Have you? That'll give me some leverage. Yes? Mr. Sturgis. What is it? About your call to the Pentagon, to General Morrison? Well? He's been... He's been transferred. Who's been transferred? General Morrison's been transferred. Is that what she's telling you? Morrison? Transferred? Yes. Your strong right arm. He's out of procurement. How did it happen? When? The Defense Department makes these transfers all the time, as a matter of course. (laughs) Ken, you've had it. Now, about your letter of resignation. My letter of resignation? Charlie has a very bright young kid in his PR group who could compose a very graceful sort of thing. All right, Steve. You won. I didn't win. The company won. Funny, isn't it? I went quietly last time. Last time? Uh, what do you mean by uh, last time? Yes. I listened to my lady. Your lady? You were the enemy then, too. Is it a coincidence that your name is Stephen? Also. Uh, Miss Magruder, uh, get a doctor. Yes. Steve. Stephen. King Stephen. Forks. King Stephen. Now, Kenneth, just sit quietly for a moment. You led the revolt. You turned England into a charnel house. Yeah, everything's going to be all right. No. As long as you live, there will be scheming and treason. Now, Kenneth. Stephen, I accuse you. Hey, put down that letter opener. You, Stephen, usurper of the crown of England... For the crime of high treason to the rightful Queen of England. Can I, can I, I don't hear think by... You're crazy. You're up. Help. Help. Somebody help. Sturgis. No. No. Justice. Justice, my lady, has finally been done. How 
are you this morning, sir? What manner of place is this? Oh, this. A new sort of castle, sir. And why are you dressed in this fashion, my lady? It's the new fashion. I think it revealing, perhaps, but if the good Lord did not wish female beauty to be shown, he would not have bestowed it upon the fair sex to begin with. And so, madam, you rule in England. Oh, yes, I, uh, I do. I know that your majesty must keep me in prison. It is the price I must pay for Stephen. Yes, it's the, the price you must pay. It was murder. But I did it gladly for my queen. I, too, am descended from royalty. Scottish royalty. My name, Kenneth, means handsome in our Scottish tongue. Uh, do you do you have everything you need? Yes, my good queen, Maud. I am not your good queen, Maud. I'm, I'm Miss Magruder. I'm just your, your secretary. You jest, my lady. What is a secretary? Oh, it's... It's getting late. This is a place of many wonders. Lights come on without fire. Voices and pictures issue from boxes. <laughs> I know I shall be happy here. Oh, I... I hope so. And not because I am warm and well-fed, but because I killed Stephen. And I know that you rule in England. Well, what is happiness? Each of us defines it in his own thoughts and seeks it in his own way and enjoys it in his own fashion. And if the belief that he is a 12th century Scottish knight in the court of Queen Maud of England makes Kenneth B. Sturgis happy, who are we to destroy his illusions? I have an illusion that you will be here when I return shortly. our mammoth mills and mines and factories, the men who control our commerce and industry, the men whose decisions mold the lives of millions. These men, who would they have been a thousand years ago? When Duke William of Normandy decided to invade Saxon England, he sold shares in the enterprise. For so many soldiers, weapons, ships, and supplies, you would be entitled to so much conquered English land. The entire thing was a business proposition. Our cast included Gordon Heath, William Griffiths, Terry Keene, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.